Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well, and I hope you're ready for another edition of Weekly Track Roundup After Dark, uh, where I go over what I what I felt were the best and worst tracks of the week. Uh, of course, I have to mention first before we get too deep into it that that, that I have a tour coming up, y'all. A tour, a bona fide tour, East Coast tour, lots of different dates. We got New New Jersey dates, New York, uh, Virginia. Uh, we got North Carolina, we got Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, all over the place, all over the eastern seaboard. Not not too deep in New England, you know, sorry guys, but, uh, uh, you know, m- more more dates and everything to come. These things are a mix of music, meme, lecture, calchuchesta, and uh, uh, some of the dates have been selling uh, uh, pretty good. The New York date uh, sold so well, they moved it to a bigger room in the venue. Uh, so hit up the link, theneedledrop.com slash tour to get tickets or a VIP upgrade as well with your ticket uh, to do the before show meet and greet and all that. People who do get the VIP upgrade also get an exclusive piece of content day of show, get access to that content. Um, Tennessee has been selling well. Uh, Atlanta has been selling well. So do jump on those if you do want to go, because I would hate for people who really want to go uh, to have the show sell out and then you can't go. Um, other dates are catching up though. Um, I will say that the, uh, Stanhope, New Jersey date, that one's, that one's selling a little slow right now. Don't know why all you New Jerseyans over in the Stanhope area, get on that shit, go in there, go in there, get the tickets because the tickets are cheaper pre-sale, uh, th- than they are day of show. So, you know, obviously you're, you're free, you're free. You're welcome to, uh, just walk up day of show and get a ticket. Uh, but again, they are, they are cheaper pre-sale. So just letting you know. All right. Looking forward to this. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's in June coming up soon. All right. Let's get into the uh, weekly track roundup, weekly track roundup. Uh, first I have to mention our Amazon and turntable lab associate links down there in the description box. If you head over on that turntable lab link, uh, get yourself a colorful vinyl pressing of maybe an album I reviewed on the channel. We get kickback from it. And let's get into the worst tracks of the week. Of the week. <sighs> All right. Uh, first, oh, Jesus Christ. This, this new collaborative underworld and Iggy pop track. Uh, don't have a lot of background on this cut because I don't want a lot of background on this cut because I, <laughs> I, I dislike it that much. Um, it's sort of like underworld's usual hard pulsating... Uh, very, um, I, I guess, a cold and uh, futuristic electronics thumping away uh, underneath Iggy Pop doing what sounds like just a bunch of random diatribes that are kind of cringy about a myriad of uh, other things. Um, a lot of the themes running through it sort of, sort of speak to like this, this good old days mentality like, oh, back in the day. We used to be able to smoke on the airplane. You know, it's when I when I rethink the glory days of the past, one thing that I just really truly miss, we, we used to smoke cigarettes on the airplane. That's that, that was, that's truly what was great about the past. It's truly truly what was great. Cancer. <laughs> uh yeah, it's it's a pretty awful track. Let's move on from there. Uh oh, this new ghost song. It's it's so disappointing. Dance macabre. Macabre. Yeah, the the last Goat single, Rats, was pretty underwhelming, but I feel like the album could have been redeemed. The band's forthcoming album could have been redeemed with another great single. Like, it would have given me something to anticipate. But this song just sounds like an awful hair metal ballad, but with it, kind of that creepy ghost vibe, but not really. Uh, it's it's sort of there, but it's in a diminished capacity. It's it's just a bad hair metal power ballad. Um yeah, quite, quite really one of the worst tracks they've ever put out. So I'm, I'm just going to move on to the next one. Uh, Drake, I'm upset. Dude just dropped that fire duppy freestyle. Um, sorry about that with the black, pe- the black keys popping up prematurely there. <laughs> Premature. Uh, sh- shout out to uh, 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 the, the black eyed peas, though. Um, <laughs> Drake, I'm upset. He just dropped that fire duppy freestyle and then i feel like he he owns himself by dropping this trash you know drake Drake is nothing if not consistent dude has amazing high water marks in his career some great high level stuff 
but he just can't seem to deliver that consistently. Like if he cut his output down to a third, but every album is fucking fire, like there would be no question that he's legend status. But even though he's incredibly influential, even though he has really kind of changed the game in a lot of ways that few other artists have or ever will, I feel like continually his legacy is going to be dogged by the fact that he was just inconsistent. I mean, thankfully, uh, time usually heals most wounds, and we're most likely going to uh, remember the best of Drake rather than the worst of Drake. I don't really think anybody's going to think back to a track like I'm Upset, where he's essentially like uh, simping and getting all emotional over like this uh, relationship-type situation. Uh, r- really not one of his best tracks in, in this vein. Uh, but, uh, yeah, e- even his, uh, his cadence, his flow on this track is really tedious and repetitive. And, uh, on top of it, just his lyrics just seem really bitter and indignant and, uh, whiny. And, uh, overall, it's just like a really gross track. Just n- no, no vibes coming from this song at all. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Black Eyed Peas, Ring the Alarm, part one, two, and three. God, listen to this song, watch the video. It is so fucking political, man. It's so revolutionary. It's so revolutionary, dog. The Black Eyed Peas are really fucking woke right now. This song is woke as fuck. This is the wokest shit I've ever heard. Like, you guys were at your relevancy peak during the worst years of the Bush administration. The worst years of the Bush administration, war in Iraq, Patriot Act, torture, all that shit. The worst years of the Bush administration. And you were putting out my humps and let's get it started. (laughs) Okay, those were your singles. Okay, those were your artistic statements during the Bush years. Okay, Um, I don't want to hear you all of a sudden get political because it's fucking Trump. Okay, obviously he's like one of the worst fucking things to happen to this country. But as as we were on the downturn, as we were going in that direction, y'all were saying shit. Okay, y'all were saying shit. <laughs> let's let's just let's just get that clear. Okay, so now uh, all of a sudden, whoa, whoa, ring the alarm, ring the alarm. Whereas like before. War on terror, it, 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 let's invade this country, that country, the other country, and, and this, that, and the third. Y- y'all are like, hey, guys, let's get it started. I, I'm a beat. I'm a beat. I'm a beat. <laughs> uh, I know that came out a little bit later, but still, I'm just busting balls here. Yeah, th- this track is corny. I, 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 have, I have nothing for this track, and it's just ridiculous that black eyed peas are coming back, and they're all of a sudden, guys, guys, it's... You know, it's it's just too important of a time socially for us not to be releasing music and for our music not to not to be addressing really important political issues in a very vague way. Um, yeah, this is this is like Mick woke. You know, it's it's not it's not very deep. It's not very interesting. It's it's Mick woke. Uh, moving on from there, let's get into the tracks I thought were meh, uh, not amazing, not terrible, but cer- certainly worth mentioning. Uh, Big Bank, YG, 2 Chains, Big Sean, Nicki Minaj, all in the same song, and it really could not be a, a bigger snoozer. Yeah, it's just okay. Production's super bland. I mean, I love uh, YG's last record. You know, I, I like a 2 Chains uh, feature. Big Sean can be good on a feature if he's clever and if he's funny. And, and generally, I, I, generally I, I don't mind a Nicki Minaj feature either, but but the thing is, like, nobody on this track is really a powerhouse, in my opinion. Nobody's really kind of carrying the song. Nobody's really truly the anchor of the song. And as a result, it just kind of feels like uh, slop. Just feels like slop. It just not really any strong direction to it. Uh, just kind of feels like uh, uh, each artist on here is just taking, like, a little bit of a piss take. So, whatever. Uh, moving on from there, new Tyler, the creator, 435 Freestyle. Tyler's getting real fucking cocky ever since he came out with Flower Boy. Okay, it's it's a very good album, all right? It's a very good album. <laughs> okay, it's it's very good record, but it, it's not Illmatic, okay? It's it's not Illmatic. Like let's let let's let's try to make the next record a 10 out of 10 and 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 then just keep flexing. You know, then flex. Uh, but for right now, you know, Flower Boy's great. It's great. It's very good. Okay. But, uh, 
you know, let's 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 just get into the next album mode or something. You know, let's let's make that next record a a, a real true blue, unequivocal classic, some T Pab level shit. Okay, and, and and then we'll be talking. All right, moving on from there. I'm breaking balls. Uh, moving on from there. Sleep has a new Adult Swim single out. Leagues beneath. Seventeen minute cut from Sleep. Um, the sound of it isn't that much better than a lot of the stuff that was on their new album. Um, you know, you can kind of take it as like a lengthy single type track, like their clarity uh, single song that uh, has a very wonderful astronaut etching on it, by the way, if you uh, uh, pick up the vinyl. Uh, you know, uh, it's decent. You know, it's it's a sleep song. Uh, just sort of sounds like an average cut of theirs. Um, you know, sort of seems like they're kind of going back a little bit to... The, the, what's typically expected of them resting on their laurels. You know, I really admired on a, on their latest record how they kind of cut things down, were a bit more straightforward with it, and um, uh, uh, were a bit more ferocious with uh, some of the guitar work, um, kind of changing up in the vocals a little bit. This one just felt uh, kind of average for sleep. Uh, but still, you know, they, they don't have that much material. So uh, a 17-minute uh, sleep song is, is still a momentous occasion, so... Uh, moving on from there, Death Grips Flies, another Death Grips single, uh, and, and yet again, I feel kind of underwhelmed. In one sense, I, I feel like this is one of their more experimental cuts um, with the kind of bustling, uh, very frantic and uh, uh, difficult to decipher rhythms, uh, which are very sporadic and strange. Uh, MC Ride's performance on the chorus is... Uh, uh, very nutsy and animalistic. And there's almost something kind of like raw and slightly lo-fi about the production of the track that reminds me a little bit of like Money Store era uh, Death Grips. But I don't know, the descending uh, sort of cycling arpeggios, uh, that combined with uh, some of Ride's vocals, uh, as well as the very messy transition into uh, uh, the hook and vice versa, uh, to me, just kind of makes the song feel like a, a bit blobby and, and not really that exciting. Um, you know, still love black paint. Uh, and, and I do like the fact that this song seems kind of experimental for them, but uh, not one of their better tunes, not, not some of their best writing. And, and I just find the instrumental just a little, a little obnoxious uh, and not necessarily in like a super abrasive or experimental or uh, super way out their way, you know, um, just kind of seems like a little... Uh, tedious with that uh, chord progression, but uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, moving on from there, let's get into the best tracks of the week, the songs I really enjoyed, really loved, uh, definitely want to highlight for you guys. Uh, Vane, another Vane song. This band is uh, kind of a really killer up-and-coming metalcore and mathcore outfit uh, with some really crazy guitar work on this cut. Super aggressive vocals, you know, if you love that early botch stuff, if you love that early converge stuff, early Dillinger escape plan stuff. You're really going to like what this band is bringing to the table. Uh, I think it remains to be seen once I hear the entire album, what it is exactly is, is going to separate themselves from a lot of those groups who clearly influence them. But I really do think that they're putting together some good stuff. And the two singles so far have just been fucking killer. So uh, moving on from there, uh, Tricot has a couple of new tracks out, new music video that we're linking you to down below the track potage or pottage. Uh, this outfit is a, uh, Far East math rock band uh, with very um, pretty and, uh, uh, I don't know, I guess just a, a lovely lead vocals, great grooves, quality layered instrumentation, not your usual generic American emo-infused math rock that you typically catch over here. Uh, this is, uh, while it is uh, very melodic, um, I would say there's a lot of instrumental muscle there that, that I like quite a bit. And it's not just needless, soulless noodling. It's uh, actually quite tasteful and uh, um, uh, very uh, very thoughtfully put together. Uh, moving on from there, R&R &R equals Now is this sort of new jazz supergroup that uh, you should most definitely check out. You know, if you're into uh, Terrace Martin, um, Christian Scott is involved with this thing. Um, who else off the top of my head? I, it's, it's, oh, God, who is it? Oh, I'm having a bit of a brain fart here, but check it out. Check out the personnel list. Uh, this particular track over here, and, and also I want to mention that they have a few songs out so far. New album on the way this year. And uh, this new track over here, Resting Warrior, 
is uh, this lovely, like, 10-minute, spacey, almost kind of psychedelic, very funky jam uh, that's really invigorating, uh, very relaxing, and uh, pretty cerebral, too. And uh, if, if that other name comes back to me, I will uh, most definitely say it. Hold on a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. I'm going to get it. Robert Glasper, I, I think, is also uh, in, involved with this project as, as well. Uh, which again, you know, it's it's that's that's a pretty good um, it's a pretty good roster uh, for uh, uh, you know a, a new group of kind of a uh, uh, this this new wave of jazz artists who are kind of infusing elements of hip hop and pop into jazz music. So you know, respect to that. Uh, hold on a second. Let me get into the uh, next one over here. Next track. Next track. Next track. Oh, this new cut from the OCs. God, is it fiery. It's noisy. It's abrasive. It's heavy. It's uh, actually quite devilish and uh, uh, certainly traumatizing in a way. <laughs> it's so nasty. Uh, even though it's not like a um, like some kind of extreme heavy epic metal song, it kind of matches the front cover over here uh, quite perfectly. Uh, the song is titled uh, Overthrown. And it's, uh, man, it's, it's one of the nastier songs I've ever heard the group put together. Again, it's not a metal song, but there is something like really sinister and, and devilish about it, even though they stay pretty firmly in that whole garage, psych, uh, punk, lo-fi realm. Uh, definitely an interesting uh, sound that they are uh, hitting upon with this new cut over here. Uh, let's move on from there. Next one. Oh, this new James James Blake track, Don't Miss It. I don't know if any of you guys saw, but he had kind of a negative reaction to some of the coverage of this song because I guess some people were calling him a sad boy. <laughs> and I don't mean to laugh because I guess he uh, thought that, that tag that uh, uh, was uh, problematic. Uh, I, I didn't quite look into his comments on that, but uh, he, he thought that tag was quite problematic. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say the song is any sadder than usual for James Blake, uh, not the saddest I've ever heard from him. Uh, to me, it kind of feels a little bit in line with his last major single, which I loved, uh, as I do enjoy this one as well, uh, where it feels like he's kind of fusing those elements of piano balladry that we have come to know him for since he's kind of blown up onto the music scene and fusing it really effectively with, uh, you know, elements of electronic music, some really strange uh, electronic edits uh, that I find add a lot of texture and add a lot of personality and uh, uh, add a lot of beauty to the track. So, uh, you know, the ballad itself seems really solid. James singing is great. The piano chords are very rich and tasteful and moody and uh, all those extra edits are uh, just kind of uh, the cherry on top so really kind of digging it uh, moving on from there drake's duppy freestyle i've already kind of praised it earlier on in the video i think drake viciously takes down pusha t on this song uh, i'm going to be coming out with a video soon on the fantano channel explaining uh, all my thoughts on a lot of the bars on that track and uh, basically my hopes going forward for this uh, Pusha T and Drake beef. So please do be on the lookout for that and subscribe theneedledrop.com slash Fantano, theneedledrop.com slash Fantano. But all around, I think uh, Drake kind of clears the air a little bit around the Quentin Miller thing. I think he tears Pusha T a new one with some pretty solid bars. Uh, calling out the hypocrisy on the Kanye thing, uh, clarifying the Quentin Miller thing, uh, basically making fun of his uh, uh, waning relevance and so on and so forth. So I, I think I think he's got some nasty bars on this one. You know, were they written by somebody else? You know, maybe, possibly. Uh, not going to deny that that's a possibility. Uh, but still, you know, I, I feel like he kind of came at him pretty nasty. So, and that, oh, excuse me. And that's going to be the weekly track roundup. All right. Uh, again, usually. You guys know the drill, uh, but just to remind you, all the songs that we talked about in this video are linked down there in the description box. Check them out down there. Uh, again, along with our link to the forthcoming tour, because we have tickets and everything on sale. So get them, 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 get them. Uh, you're the best. Love you, love you, love you. Anthony Fantano, uh, weekly track roundup forever.